Well, hi everyone, my name is uh, Kais. Um, basically, my disclosures here, I am a hospitalist in internal medicine, and I uh, uh, follow Dr. Shamas, who is the primary operator in this case, at uh, Midwest Cardiovascular Research Foundation. So the case that I have here is a, a combined radial and pedal access to treat a flush uh, occlusion of the SFA in a CLI patient. Uh, no disclosures to this case. Um, this is a 52-year-old uh, male patient with type 2 diabetes, uh, peripheral artery disease, had a, a left AKA amputation a few weeks prior, uh, has a non-healing wounds on his left stump and also has uh, wounds on his right foot. Uh, unfortunately, continues to smoke. He was referred for a revascularization for a non-healing ulcer on his right foot. Exams relevant for a, uh, uh, on the left stump, he had a wound vac, and he had developed new ulcers in his right uh, foot. Uh, prior angiogram to uh, this presentation from a right common femoral axis showed occlusion to his distal left external iliac uh, up to his left uh, proximal SFA. So approach at that time was to stent his uh, proximal external iliac and uh, given that he had collaterals feeding the uh, uh, distal stump, there was no further intervention at that time. Now the patient is back for a uh, uh, stage treatment for her, uh, the, uh, the osteal SFA on the right side, and uh, this is basically the case. So uh, clearly there is an access site challenge in this case. Uh, contralateral access is not an option given the severe disease, the occlusion basically in his uh, uh, left uh, uh, iliac. Also a uh, uh, anti-grade access to teeth and osteal lesion is also not uh, the best option here. So um, the plan here was to proceed with a uh, uh, radial axis and a dual approach with a uh, dorsalis pedis axis. So given the recent release of uh, long wires and long balloons from Turumo um, that are currently at a pre-market stage in the US, uh, they have been used in Europe, but at the moment they are in a pre-market trial in the US. This had helped in this uh, case, and this case will illustrate the feasibility of using the radial and the pedal approach for such an osteal legion. This image here shows the, uh, uh, on the right side here, this is the pedal axis with a five French, six French cylinder. This is the radial axis, and this long, uh, this is actually a sheath, 118 centimeter radial sheath that was uh, required to be placed afterward. So details of the procedure, um, dorsalis pedis was obtained via micropuncture technique. Um, six French, five French uh, cylinder was used uh, immediately 400 mics of IV nitro and 4,000 units of IV uh, heparin were uh, administered. Uh, radial artery was uh, accessed with a six French cylinder. Um, Woolly wire was advanced, uh, pigtail was utilized, and uh, um, iliac runoffs were done. And uh, it was noted to have a uh, occlusion in the osseal SFA as well as occlusion in the left uh, iliac uh, arteries. So the radial sheath here was exchanged to the long destination, 118 centimeter to Romo sheath. Uh, woolly wire was exchanged for a 400 centimeter uh, 0.035 uh, uh, angled stiff, and a glide uh, sheath was advanced over that. Now this, sorry, this sheath was placed into, uh, and the wire were placed into the profunda. Contrast injection was done, and it did visualize a uh, reconstitution of the distal SFA up to the pop. Um, now the catheter was pulled back to the common femoral, so proper visualization with further uh, contrast injection will be utilized. Uh, from the pedal uh, retrogradely, uh, Navicross was advanced over a 260 uh, guide wire advantage wire, and uh, the attempt was to do a retrograde crossing for this legion. Now the catheter and the wire from the pedal axis were advanced up to the proximal SFA. Uh, unfortunately, it was at the Almost at the tip of the SFA, it was not to be in a sub space, despite uh, escalating wires, multiple wire techniques, a STATO 40 gem, uh, V18, uh, the wire not to be in a sub location, as you can see here. So the uh, black arrow shows the four flinch glide sheets from the radial axis. It's almost, this is a really tall patient who was like five, six, sorry, six, five. And you can see that the tip there of the, uh, uh, glide sheath up to the almost distal common femoral. From the retrograde axis, you can see the Navicross with the uh, glide wire um, noted to be in a sub space there. Um, there was like a rock 
basically sitting in that space that was really difficult to uh, attempt. So at that point, um, um, discussion uh, and the idea was to, why not to cross from the anti-grid approach? So just passing the 400 centimeter uh, uh, long wire from the uh, radial approach, uh, crossing was successful. Um, this wire was advanced down to the SFA uh, and distally and over this wire, uh, it was uh, uh, noted to be in an intimal uh, location and we can show that in the next image. Uh, over this, a 200 centimeter uh, monorail six by 100 meter cross balloon by Teruma was uh, used. Dilation of the entire SFA segment was carried out and um, uh, from the retrograde approach, from the pedal sheet, a V18 wire was used. It was advanced up to the uh, uh, distal aorta, and uh, uh, stenting was necessary in this case with the use of the silver PTX from the pedal axis. Two stents were deployed in the proximal and med SFA, and the distal SFA was treated with a lutonix balloon with good 5% uh, residual narrowing. So this image on the left shows crossing from the anti-grade approach. Um, as you can see, the wires almost touching the Navicross uh, distal uh, catheter. And this image here shows both wires anti-gradely and uh, retrogradely to be uh, in the true lumen. Uh, further uh, treatment to the CFA was required. Uh, the use of Latonix balloon was uh, uh, administered to uh, uh, the CFA. Uh, unfortunately, a type C dissection was noted that uh, uh, required the placement of a stent, and this stent was placed to the proximal and mid uh, CFA, leaving the uh, distal portion free from stenting. Uh, it was a live stent. This image shows the dissection and the common femoral artery. This is the final image here showing a uh, stent in the common femoral, stenting in the osteal SFA and the mid SFA. So what was uh, helpful in this case and uh, uh, really helped out was the available or availability of the radial tools by uh, Turomo, the 118 centimeter destination sheath, the uh, long guide wire, uh, uh, angled glide wire for 100 centimeter and the Metacross RX balloon. Um, so uh, the anti-grade axis here was really important. It visualized the bifurcation of the common femoral. It uh, enabled visualization of the profunda and to protect the profunda in an attempt to treat an osteal SFA also, crossing was actually uh, done in this case from the anti-grade approach. And now the new tools that are available by, uh, in the US at the current uh, pre-market stage enabled an, uh, a really effective opportunity to treat this case from a radial approach. Now, they are limited to uh, long wires, long crossing catheters, and long balloons up to 200. Unfortunately, there is no stent uh, that can reach from the radial axis down to the SFA. There is no DCB balloons from that axis, and there is no treatment to the tibial vessels from a uh, radial axis. Uh, so this was, uh, pedal axis was uh, needed to be coupled uh, to uh, treat this case. Um, the pedal axis here provided an alternative approach to cross the lesion. Uh, although crossing was not successful, but it enabled the anti-grade crossing as it provided like an anatomical guidance where you can see the Navicross uh, wire and the uh, SFA. So it enabled the operator to easily cross from an anti-grade approach. So finally, this case illustrates a approach of a dual and a, P a radial and a pedal axis to treat a flush SFA occlusion. Thank you. Well, we're short on time, but I think this shows where we are going with the technology. I think we still have a lot to learn, you know, is it, is a pedal going to be safer than, let's say, a popliteal puncture in this case? Is, you know, are we limited in terms of what you can really put in through a pedal and, and you know, stent delivery and what have you? Very interesting case, very complicated case. But I think as we see more, more work going to the outpatient situation, I can see us trying to figure out how to safely do this from a pedal and radial approach. But that's my comment. I don't know if uh, I think we're just going to keep those engineers sure. busy at these companies to work on smaller and smaller equipment. Um, I just had one comment, yeah. you know, um, and I was curious to see what Tino thought about the placement of the common femoral stent with that short uh, segment of gap. And of course, instant uh, restenosis really occurs in that in segment yep. outside of stents. And so you've now got 
a, a pretty high likelihood of potential instant restenosis. So in this case, would you have spent it across that profunda into the common femoral to uh, minimize that potential? Yeah, I mean, I, I think in this situation, you are trying to put as, as less stent as possible. Uh -huh. And I think that's, you know, they treat it with the DCB first. So hopefully that drug is there and will help with restenosis. We don't know. The truth is we don't know. But I think there I try to minimize the amount of stenting. A lot of people have talked about putting a Supera stent in the common femoral. I don't really do that. I try not to stent. Right. So I think that's what they were trying to do, minimize the stent and not jail the profund. I think the profund yeah. is key. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks. All right.